Hello once again, this is Engineer Maria Cristina Valerio. This is the first lesson on module two of our course in differential equation. And the lesson for today is about preliminary concepts on n order linear ordinary differential equations. So this lesson is from a first course in differential equation with modeling application by Dan Zeal. The topic is preliminary theory on linear equations. Introduction, a general solution is a family of solutions that is defined on some interval i that contains all solutions of the differential equation that are defined on i. Only in the case of linear first order differential equations were we able to obtain general solutions by paying close attention to certain continuity conditions that are imposed on the coefficients in the equation. Because our primary goal in this chapter is to find general solutions of linear higher order differential equation. For 4.1.1, we will have the initial value and boundary value problems. Now, what is an initial value problem? For a linear differential equation, an end order initial value problem, IVP, is to solve the equation A sub N of X times the end derivative of Y with respect to X plus A sub N minus one of x times n minus one derivative of y with respect to x plus until we have a one of x times dy over dx plus a, a zero of x times y equals g of x and is subject to the following conditions. We have y at x zero equals y zero, y prime at x zero is equal to y one, and then we have the n minus one derivative of y at x0, which is equal to y sub n minus 1. We want to know whether we can find a solution that exists and that the solution to be unique. So in theorem 4.1.1, we will have the existence of a unique solution. Let a sub n of x, a sub n minus 1 of x, until we have a sub 1 of x, and a0 of x and g of x be continuous on an interval i, and let a sub n of x not equal to zero for every x in this interval. If x is equal to x zero is any point in this interval, then a solution y of x of the initial value problem in one exists on the interval and is unique. For example, the initial value problem, three times y triple prime plus five times y double prime minus y prime plus seven times y equal to zero, Subject to the following conditions, y of 1 equal to 0, y prime of 1 equal to 0, and y double prime of 1 equal to 0 possesses the trivial solution y equal to 0. And you can check that one for yourself since if y is equal to 0, y prime is 0, y double prime is 0, y triple prime is 0. And when substituted to the differential equation, we have 3 times 0 plus 5 times 0 minus 0 plus 7 times 0 is equal to 0. Therefore, the solution y is equal to 0 satisfies the differential equation. Also, because the third order equation is linear, so we can see that y, y prime, y double prime, and y triple prime are all first degree, and they have constant coefficients, which are all continuous functions, it follows that all the conditions of theorem 4.1.1 are fulfilled. And hence, uh, y is equal to zero is the only solution on any interval containing x is equal to one. So we can see here that the solution is unique and the solution exists primarily because we will have the coefficients of y and its derivative being continuous. And we can see that a sub n is not equal to zero. And for the continuous functions, the interval is all set of real numbers for which the initial point x is equal to 1 is also in this interval. Hence, y is equal to 0 is the only solution on the interval containing x equals 1. Now, what about boundary value problem? Another type of problem consists of solving a linear differential equation of order 2 or greater in which the dependent variable y or its derivatives are specified at different points. A problem such as Say we have a sub 2 of x times d squared y over dx squared plus a sub 1 of x times dy over dx plus a 0 of x times y equals g of x that is subject to the conditions or two points y of a equals y 0 and y of b equals y 1 is called a boundary value problem or BVP. 
the prescribed values y of a equals y0 and y of b equals y1 are called boundary conditions. A solution of the foregoing problem is a function, so we're looking for a solution, is a function satisfying the differential equation on some interval i containing a and b whose graph passes through the points a comma y0 and b comma y1. So we're given in figure 4.1.1 the solution curves of a BVP that pass through two points. With the given solution curves, we will have the blue curve as well as the pink curve satisfying the boundary conditions wherein they pass through the points a comma y0 and b comma y1. So for a second order differential equation, other pairs of boundary conditions could be we will have y prime of a equals y0 and y of b equals y1. We can also have y of a equals y0 and y prime of b equals y1. And y prime of a equals y0 and y prime of b is equal to y1. Where y0 and y1 denote arbitrary constant. Now these three pairs of conditions are just special cases of the general boundary conditions given by you have your alpha 1 times y of a plus beta 1 times y prime of a equals gamma 1. And alpha 2 times y of b plus beta 2 times y prime of b is equal to gamma 2. Now in example number 3, we will have a boundary value problem that can have many, one, or no solution. We know that the two-parameter family of solutions of the differential equation x double prime plus 16x equal to 0 is x is equal to c1 times cosine 40 plus c2 times sine 40. So let, let this be our equation two. We will have two parameters c1 and c2. Suppose we now wish to determine a solution of the equation that further satisfies the boundary conditions x of zero is zero and x of pi over two is zero. Observe that the first condition that is x of zero equal to zero will give us the following. We have zero is equal to C1 cosine zero plus C2 sine zero. And sine zero is zero, cosine zero is one. So this implies that C1 is equal to zero. So X is equal to C2 times sine 4T. But when T is equal to pi over two, we will have four times pi over two. We will have sine two pi, right? So we will have x is 0 is equal to c2 times sine 2 pi is satisfied for any choice of c2 since 2 pi is equal to 0. Hence, the boundary value problem, x double prime plus 16x equal to 0, subject to the conditions x of 0 is equal to 0, and x of pi over 2 equal to 0, has infinitely many solutions. Okay, the figure 4.1.2 here shows that the graphs of some of the members of the one parameter family X is equal to sine 40 that passes through the points 0, 0 and pi over 2, 0. So you see there's, there are a lot or there are several um, solution curves that passes through the two uh, points indicating infinitely many solutions. If the boundary value problem in three, however, is changed to x double prime plus 16x equal to zero and subject to the conditions x of zero is equal to zero, and we will have now an x of pi over eight is equal to zero. Let this be our equation four. Then x of zero equal to zero still requires that c1 is equal to zero in the solution two. Remember that solution two is given by x is equal to c1 cosine 40 plus C2 sine 4T. So when T is zero, sine is zero, um, cosine zero is one, and we know that X is zero when T is zero. Hence, we still have C1 is equal to zero. So we're left with X is equal to C2 sine 4T when, um, since C1 is equal to zero, substituting the value of T, which is equal to pi over eight, we're left with um, sine pi over two. So we will now have x is equal to zero is equal to C2 times sine pi over two. Sine pi over two is equal to one. We will have zero is equal to C2 times one 
or we will have C2 is equal to 0. So this tells us that X is equal to 0 is a solution of this new boundary value problem. Indeed, it can be proved that X is equal to 0 is the only solution of 4 that satisfies the boundary conditions X of 0 is 0 and X of pi over 8 is equal to 0. So this means that for the problem, okay, let's not, let us review that one. We will have x double prime plus 16x is equal to 0, uh, subject to x of 0 is equal to 0, and then we will have x at pi over 2 is equal to 0. With this, we will have um, an infinitely many solution given by x is equal to c2 sine 4t. And then when, it, when we have x double prime plus 16x is equal to 0, subject to the boundary conditions, x of 0 is equal to 0, and x at pi over 8 is equal to 0, we will have x is equal to 0 is the only solution satisfying the boundary conditions. Finally, if we change x double prime plus 16 times x equal to 0, when we have x of 0 equal to 0 and x of pi over 2 equals 1, let, let, let it be equation 5. Again, if we substitute the first condition x of 0 equal to 0, we will have c1 is equal to 0. So then again, we're left with x is equal to c2 times sine 4t. And when we substitute the value of t, uh, which is pi over 2, okay, this leads to the contradiction that one is equal to C2 times sine 2 pi. So we have four times pi over two that will give us two pi. And sine two pi is equal to zero. One is not equal to zero. So this tells us that when the conditions are X of zero equal to zero and X at pi over two equals one, then there is no solution. So that will be for the um, initial value problem as well as a boundary value problem for um, an n-order linear ordinary differential equation.